Hey, it's Merrill. I speak now to tell you that this video will teach you how to fill a blank space with a painted portrait of Taylor Swift. No, 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 wait. I'm serious here. All you have to do is stay. Your painting won't be a picture to burn because I'm going to show you how to get the girl step by step. Everything has changed? No, come back here. It's still step by step. I'm just using paint this time. This way, due to the explicit instruction, you will paint beautiful eyes all too well. Hey Merrill, where do you get the painting supplies? Don't worry, I know places. But let's start out with a pencil and some canvas paper. If you use the eraser too much, please don't forget to shake it off. Let's begin. Step 1. Make four lines and make sure that the three spaces in between are equal distances. Step 2. Make the bowl shape. Step 3. Make the nose. Notice that it is off-center and towards the left-hand side. Step 3. Make the upper lip. Be sure to measure how close it is to the bottom of the nose. Step 4. Make an upside down rainbow shape for the bottom lip. Step 5 is to do the eyes. It's a rainbow shape, a circle, and the eyelashes on either side. Be sure to notice that there's slightly more than one eye length in between the two eyes. Step 6. Taylor Swift has some serious eyelashes. Curl the eyelashes across the bottom lid. Step 7. Add the edges of the face. Use the original four lines from Step 1 as a grid to make it as accurate as possible. Step 8. Give Taylor Swift one and a half eyebrows. The reason we're giving her a half an eyebrow on the right is because it will be covered with her hair. Step 9. Add the line to complete the face shape. Step 10. Give her some bling. Step 11. Add these two shapes for the hair. Step 12. Add another shape for the hair. Step 13. Add the hair on the left hand side. Step 14. Add the shape for the neck. Step 15. Give her shoulders. Step 15. Use a flesh tone marker to do a simple layer on the face without any detail. The only areas that should not be covered are the teeth and the eyes. In step 16, you're going to use colored pencils. Colored pencils are great tools for details. They have a fine point and you could use them like a really, really thin paintbrush. I'm using the Prismacolor Flesh Tone set. It's full of browns, pinks, greens, and reds, and I'm using them to add depth to the face. In this step, you can add color to the cheeks. You can also start to round the chin. Colored pencil is really helpful to do the hair as well. I built it up strand by strand just like I did in pencil drawings. One of the greatest things about colored pencils is it mixes very well with oil paint and that's going to be the next step. Step 17 is the last step in this process and this is where we're going to use some oil paint directly over the colored pencil. 
Um, I know that this might sound like an expensive process, but uh, every artist has to kind of uh, tweak uh, what they've learned in school to fit their own needs. I'm somebody who honestly is not very accurate uh, in terms of uh, hand motions and, you know, getting those fine details. There's some people that absolutely have a gift, um, you know, with the line quality that they have. I'm not one of them. So I have to improvise and I have to be smart about it. And basically, uh, my process came from that and also my curiosity. I got curious what it would be like and what... Um, what materials kind of uh, go together very well. Um, so oil paint over colored pencil, to me, that's a winner. Um, I really like working in that way. First thing I would like to say to you, um, you know, if you have not tried this yet, um, I use bleed proof uh, paper. Uh, it's paper that's meant for markers, but it is good for oil paint. If you're using canvas board, that'll work too, but you'll have a little bit more problems uh, by getting the colored pencil on. Um, although uh, it should work, uh, it's just going to, of course, have like the bumpy texture. Um, you know, and you can definitely do that first, and the paint will definitely mix with the, uh, the colored pencil. But um, just in terms of like a product like I'm making right here, um, if for whatever reason you want it to look like this, um, you would want to get the bleed proof paper and I'll make sure to put a link in the video description uh, underneath uh, about the supplies that I use. You could use uh, painting medium in addition to oil paint uh, to mix it together with the colored pencil and um, you know I kind of add another layer of the paint right on top I apply with several brushes. Please see the magic happening. Um, glazing, uh, the beauty of glazing happens because of refracted light. Uh, it's a transparent layer of paint that goes right on top and basically uh, the light goes through it, bounces off the layer of opaque paint underneath it um, and you could kind of see both colors. You could see the color of the layer that you put on top and you could also see the layer that uh, it bounced off of underneath. So now we're looking to finish this and you see I am uh, adding some paint and the paint actually has a little bit of blue that's mixed in and that's because um, I mean especially if, if she's under a blue sky you see a little bit of that um, and I tied that in with the flesh tone so it's uh, a color called ultramarine blue uh, that is mixed with the flesh tone and I am just uh, putting that on the face right there um, the other side of the face is going to be a lot warmer um, so it's a, it goes a little bit more towards uh, orange and red. Um, direct light is usually uh, colder or cooler colors and shadows are usually warmer so uh, I'm gonna try to follow that. You see I apply with one brush and then I, um, I smooth it out with another. And when you do this, like don't put the pressure on yourself to make it look exactly like this. Um, let it be your own. The beauty of art is everybody's hand is slightly different. Um, you know, just develop what uh, you know what you were meant to develop um, let the style come out and uh, I think you'll be very happy with it alright so um, I am getting uh, thinner and thinner with the paint as I go further on um, I'm mixing on aluminum foil by the way um, if you don't have palette paper or a palette aluminum foil is fine you really can't see the colors as well because it's uh, you know shiny but uh, it's cheap so, you know, if you want an inexpensive alternative that's not called an art supply, use wax paper or aluminum foil uh, to do the mixing of the oil paint. Um, kind of gave her a beard for a second, but uh, I am uh, mixing in those colors, uh, just trying to differentiate the, uh, the neck from the head, um, and I'm just tying it all together. I'm adding some glaze touches to the hair, so really thinned out paint that you can still see the color underneath. Um, and you see how that jumps. You, you really get those dark darks by adding glazing and those light lights. So I'm looking for a contrast with the final layer and we're in the last um, 10 or 15 seconds of the video just trying to get those final touches in. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you could uh, hit the thumbs up button, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, if you have comments, um, I am making a real effort to answer 
um, as many comments as I humanly can. Sometimes that means all, sometimes that means a few. So leave me a comment. I will, uh, you know, I'm making an effort to really answer as many as I can. Thank you so much for watching.